In this video, we're going to be building a seeder machiner. So the goal of the video is to seed a database with data that we consumed from an API. So what we'll be using is Entity Framework, C Sharp, and MS SQL. So what we'll be doing is we'll be creating a brand new console application. Now you can build any type of application that you want. Um, the goal of this application is, the sole mission of this application is just to see the database, that's it. So I just chose a console application, but you could pick any type really. But uh, I went with that one. Then we'll go and we'll pull in a bunch of NuGet packages that we're gonna need. And here are all the NuGet packages that we'll be pulling in then. And then we'll go create a couple classes like an entity and a DB context. And then we'll create also a service class that will handle talking to our fantasy data API. And then we'll go and uh, create some migrations and populate an entire database with a whole bunch of football information. So that's pretty much it for this video. So the tools we'll be using is Visual Studio 2019 and uh, SQL Server. And I'll be showing you uh, where you can download that in a second. And here are a bunch of links that you'll find down in the description. Like if you wanna go check out information on the API that we'll be using in this video, you can go here. And also setting up a database, we'll be using this article in this video, a really good article, how to set up a database real quickly. I'm gonna be copying and pasting a lot of the code out of there that's cut down on the time in this video. So, so you'll find that link. And then also, like I said before, this is where you could download uh, SQL Server. So actually, let's go check that out actually. So here you could download um, for a free version of SQL Server on your local machine and then um, you'll get something like this when you're done setting all that up. So we're gonna be using code first entity framework, but uh, here is where we're gonna create our database and populate all our data and stuff like that. So let's go create our console application. Let's get that out of the way and pull in our, all our NuGet packages that we're gonna need. So let's start on that next. All right, so let's go create our brand new project. So create new project. And then I'm gonna uh, just search console. And then I'm after consoleapp.net framework. Click on this one and then next. I'm gonna call this um, Cedar Machiner. So Cedar or Machine, that, that would be better. Cedar Machine, okay. Now I'll just throw it in the repos, that'd be good. Yeah, create. All right, so we got our brand new console application. So now let's go and pull in all our NuGet packages that we're gonna need. So uh, if I pull this over, so we're gonna need all four of these. We're gonna need this one for uh, SQL Server, that's what we're using in this video. Then Entity uh, Framework Core. This is so we could pull in things from our configuration file. And then here's the API that we're gonna be consuming. So uh, let's start off from the top, work our way down, copy this and start pulling in our packages. So uh, right click here, manage NuGet packages, and then click on browse. So we'll definitely need this one. And then I'm gonna go why that's downloading, copy this. And move this off to here. Yes, I want all this good stuff here. I accept. All right, that is done. So now let's go and pull in our next package that we're gonna need, and that's gonna be this one. And yes, pick that, stall, and hit okay. All right, now we're gonna need one more, or actually two more. Copy this, paste that in here, and and this is the one you're after and then just install and yes and then after that is done you need one more this is the api that we're, we're going to be consuming so i went over how to use this in the last video so if you um just joining us you definitely want to go check out that video because we, we installed it we went and checked out the api and you know how to you know get a key and all that so uh, I'm not gonna go through all that in this video. So just click on install this. All right, great. So now we have all our packages. So now we could go and start creating our 
DB contacts in our entity um, classes. So let's first go check out the uh, documentation and uh, I just want to show you the code that we're going to be copying and pasting into our project. So here's a really good article and I'll have this link down in the description by the way. And here they got some code that you can just copy and paste right into your project. Gets you up and running real quickly. So we'll be doing that. So uh, let's go first create our, our DB context and then we'll go create an entity. So if we go back to our project and then just right click on project and we're going to add a, actually I'll just throw it in the root and I'll call it application DB context or something like that. That'd be good. And hit enter. All right. And then let's go and create a brand new entity as well. So I'll throw that in a folder, keep all of them in a folder. So new folder entities, we'll call it. All right, so that's where we'll throw our entities uh, pretty soon. So let's go and put in our um, code inside here. So this is gonna be public. And then we're gonna also extend the DB context. So DB context. All right, and then we need to pull that in. So that is one of the packages that we pulled in earlier. And that's inside Microsoft Entity Framework. So click on this. Okay, that part is done. So now we need to go just copy some of the code that they got going on in here. So we go back here right in the article and then down here. So they go and they set up their model and we'll be creating that in a second. And you could uh, tell that they extended the uh, DB context right there. Then here is their database connection. So let's just copy all this right here. This is all we're after right now. And then here's the entities that they created and we'll create that in a second so if we go back here paste this get rid of this one for now now what I was thinking of doing is copying and pasting like we'll create one for now and then we'll copy and paste it for any other API's that we want to pull in so we'll do something like stadiums for now or stadium so we'll create that in a second and then this will be stadiums ums. and then let's go create this entity so we go inside of our new entity folder, create new uh, class, and this will be called stadiums or stadium. All right, and then we want that to be public as well. And for now, what I'm thinking of doing is pulling in just a couple uh, items for now. So let's go actually back to our references and then right click on the um, the client fantasy data client and view an object browser we're gonna go open this up and I want to check out the models that they give you right here and then down here they have a stadium model so here's all the different stuff we could populate our database with now you could just choose like couple items let's say you're not interested in everything or you know you could do every one that they got here so let's go and actually I'm gonna go ahead and do that I'll time lapse it so I don't bore you to death but uh, let's do the name and the stadium ID so I'll just copy this go back to here I'm gonna move this over here actually yeah that's better all right so prop tap tab and then the ID and I just want this part and then this is going to be required let's go ahead and take care of that and that spell out right good and you want to pull that in from component model data notations all right and then also let's go do the uh, name and that's gonna be a string and that, that's also over here as well, name. And you're gonna to wanna to do this pretty much all the way down down the line. So I'm gonna go and time lapse this so um, it don't take too long this video, but you pretty much wanna do everything you got here, you just wanna transfer that over to here. So I'll be back in one second.
Okay, so now we have our model created. We can save all that. And then uh, we close this one down. Now we go create uh, or actually include this into our DB context. So if we close this down and then we go in here, shut this down, open this up. So now we can pull that in and that is not showing up for some reason. So we'll just go pull it in at the top. So using, and then we named our application uh, Cedar Machine. So Cedar Machine dot entities. There it is. Okay. So now that we have that pulled in, so now I'm just going to go and change the name to this to like Cedar Machine. All right. Now this is going to connect to our, our SQL server. So that should automatically create our database. So let's go and do a migration and um, see if this creates a database for us without a problem. So I'm just going to minimize this and then let's go and do a migration. So let's go add a migration. So I'm going to come back and delete all this anyway. So I'm just going to call it in it. That'd be good. All right, great. Everything is looking pretty good. So let's just go and update the database. Update database. Uh, see if everything works out fine. All right, so it updated that, the database. So let's go and check out SQL Server and see if our database was created without a problem. All right, so let's see if we created a new database. So if we go and right click and just refresh it and repopulate everything, so open that up. Now we should have a database, database called Cedar Machine and there it is. And inside that there should be a table that should be called stadiums. All right, great. So now if we go and we check this out, it has nothing in it. Uh, we didn't seed it with anything, we just created it. So now we needed to go and seed our database with a bunch of information that we could we get from the API. So let's go and get that set up. So what we will need to do is create a service and I have that here in our checklist here. So let's go create a service and that will handle talking to our fantasy data API. Now, if you're just joining us, I did this in the prior video. I created a service and all that and I showed you how to pull in a key. So we're, we're gonna do it all over again, but uh, keep in mind you go to check out the last video if you want more detail, you know. So let's go create a service folder. So if we go back to our project and then right click add folder. This is where we'll hold all our services. And then inside here, we'll create a uh, service uh, class. And uh, I'll just call it NFL since this is talking to the NFL API. So services, we'll do all that in, on this document or in this class. So services. All right, so uh, let's make this public. Public. Now we're going to need to pull in our key right, right from the get-go. So let's go. Uh, it's going to be private, then read only, and then it's going to be a string that's going to be returned from our configuration file, or actually our app config file. So, and that's actually the reason why I pulled in one of our um, our references earlier was so we could pull stuff out of the config file. But uh, we'll call this the key like this is the key that goes to the api so we'll call it like sports data key that'd be good so key equals configuration manager and then we should be able to pull this in now and so it's from system configuration now if you did not pull in that package and i'll pull, I'll pull this up this package right here when uh, when we we're downloading all our nougats you're this is not going to show up for you i i discovered that the hard way so um you'll have to pull in that package to get this to pop up like this so you want to pull in system configuration that should pull it up here at the top so this should work now that should give you app settings so app settings and then um we haven't set this up in the uh app.config file yet but we will in a second so I'm gonna call it something like uh, sports data key. We'll just keep it the same, that'd be good. 
All right, so now let's go inside of our app.config file and we're gonna to need to set this up. So let's go and add our app settings here within the uh, configuration. So actually right here, so app settings. And then uh, we're gonna add a, our key right here. All right, then I'll just put something like key goes here, goes here. And then here is where you want to put uh, that the key name that we created. That would be this right here. Copy this. Go back here. All right. So what I'm going to do is um, uh, pause the video and then put a valid key in here. And then I'm going to just close this down so no one sees my inf information. And I'll be back in one second. Okay. So I went and closed down the app.config file and this should be working. And I went ahead and cleaned up our working environment here. So now let's go and finish off our servers here. So now let's create a constructor. We're gonna go and pull in that client. So C-T-O-R. This is a little different than what I did in the last video. Well, I'm gonna just uh, instantiate it right here, our client. So if we go back here, there's a client inside of the fantasy data. And this is how we're gonna make our API call through the NFL version three uh, stats, I think it is. Yes, and then it's get all stadiums. That's what we're trying to accomplish here. There it is, get stadiums. So uh, we wanna go and pull this in. So I'm just gonna copy this, so I don't have to type it out. And go here. So I'll call it client for short. Client equals new, and then paste this. And actually I'll, I'll shorthand it here. Pull it in at the top, all right. Okay, so now we have access to this. Uh, let me go ahead and pull this in. All right, good. And then also we'll create a private property. That'd be fine. Okay, so now we have access to those uh, methods. So now let's go and create a method of our own. We'll call it like get all stadiums or something like that. That'd be good. So public, it's gonna return a list of stadiums. And then we'll call it something like get all stadiums. That'd be good. I could have copied the code we did in the last video and just pasted it in here, um, but uh, this is fine. We'll just go ahead and uh, create it again. So get all stadiums. Now we're gonna wanna pull in that model from here, not from the entities, but from uh, right here. So I'm actually gonna come over here, down to the models, let's open that back up. And it's in here, this stadium, that's the one we wanna pull in. So let's go and just copy this. Very good. And then I'm going to go back to our service and just pull it in at the top using this. All right. And that should take care of this. Very good. Okay. So now we need to return it. So all we do is say return and then the client get stadiums. Great. And that's, that's it for this one. And then we're getting the underline right here. And the reason is, is I forgot to add this guy, our key, very important. And I should take care of that error. Okay, so now our service is all taken care of. So now we need to tell our DB context about this and pull in all our um, stadiums into that and seed our database. And we'll do that next. All right, so let's go inside of our DB context and pull everything in. So there's many different ways of doing this. Uh, I'm just gonna pull it in through the constructor. I'm not gonna be doing like dependency injection and, and doing all that. So I'll just try to keep it real simple, keep the videos kind of short. So I'll just pull in our new service in here. So I'll just call it NFL service equals new. And then that service we created, so NFL service all right and then we should be able to pull that in if I spell it correctly and no I didn't it's with an s all right there it is okay and then I'll just create a private property again all right so we should have access to that service now so now we need to seed our database so if you put override like that then on model create that's exactly what you're looking for hit tab and then we can just get rid of this we're going to attach something to this model builder copy and 
and it's called entity and then it's the stadium that we're trying to see the database with and then has data that's what you want has that there it is okay and then our brand new property oh I gotta fix this build error right there okay good then copy this and put that in there and then that method that we created it was called get all stadiums stadiums and then that's it so if we do a new migration it should populate everything uh, with stadiums so if we save this and then uh, just package manager go to that and then we'll do a new um, migration and uh, we'll just call it C database all right okay great so I made a mistake here so the the state is required and uh, the state was not provided from the API this is a good thing that this happened so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the state optional. So what I'm going to do is go back and delete the migration. Normally you wouldn't want to do this, but I'm dropping the whole database anyways. So I like to keep the migrations folder kind of short at the beginning. So let's go ahead and just delete it, delete this. We're going to make the state optional. So we've got a little work to work around here. So let's go and delete the migrations. Now, you definitely don't want to do that if you're working with existing databases and stuff like that. You want to be very careful doing that. But in this case, we're out at the beginning stage of this project, so I don't really care. And then I'm going to go into the stadiums. I'm going to make this optional, the state, because uh, sometimes that is not being provided. Very good. So, and let's clean this up a little bit. So now the state should be optional. Save this. All right, so now we go and we go back to the database. And we're just going to delete the database. All right, sometimes it doesn't let me drop uh, the database when I got my code editor open. I'll be back in one second. Okay, so I finally got rid of the database. So if we go back to here and let's do a brand new uh, migration. So add migrations. Then I'm gonna, I'll just call it like seed database. That'd be good. Hey, okay. All right, great. So let's go and just update the database now. So update database. All right, great. So we just updated the database. So now if we go back here and we go and refresh it and open this up, we should have our new database in there and then we open this up open the tables click on stadiums right click and then edit top 200 now we should have our database all populated okay great now you probably could end the video here this is pretty much we accomplished the goal but i kind of want to add more data than this i want to add teams and stuff like that so what I'm going to do is just time lapse it uh, because I'm basically going to be repeating what I just did here. So um, I'll be back in one second. I'm just going to time lapse this and create a couple more entities. And then uh, I'll be back when I'm adding it to the DB context here. So I'll be back in one second.
okay so I finally got this entity uh, created this took a little longer than I was expecting I'll probably put some music over it or something but um so I went and double checked everything now this is required the team ID this is how we're gonna call individual teams from our own API and then also this is a stadium so you gotta make sure you get that right and uh, so I think we're ready to do a migration hopefully this works without a problem but uh, oh, before we do that, we got to go into our DB contacts and, and set this up. So let's go and we'll just shut this down. It's saved. All right. And it's pretty straightforward just to add another one. Just copy and paste. So copy and then paste that here. We'll put team here. And then teams. And then right down here, we'll copy this. Paste it. This is going to be a team. And then get all teams. We're going to have to create that in the service, by the way. So create all teams. All right. Copy this. And I think this file is done. So now we got to go into our service and just add another method for this. Actually, I'll just copy this. It would be better. Copy. Paste. And then I don't want to spell this wrong. Copy. Go back here. All right, and then this will have to be there it is all right and then make sure you close it up right and then fix this all right a little configuration here and we can get rid of this clean this up okay save this now our service is done let's go back here all right and this is looking good okay so i think we're ready to do another migration so let's go ahead and add a migration and we'll call this seed teams or something like that so add migration and then call it seed teams teams this would be a miracle if this works correctly no Okay, let's go and see what's going on here. So stadium details. So if we go back to our, uh, this one, let's look for stadium details. For now, I'll just get rid of it. Let's get rid of this and then save it. And then let's go try run that one more time. Okay, so um, that works. So let's go and update database. Very good. Let's go and check out our database, make sure it's all in there. So we should, if we go and refresh this, and then let's go check this out. Go in here, open this up. And we were there, we got all our teams. That's awesome. So if you want to just, you know, um, seed your database with an existing API, this is a really good way of doing it. So I hope uh, this helps somebody out. And uh, thanks for watching the video. Like and subscribe. And uh, thanks again.